Yes. I have two questions. Raise your uh, one. Two questions, brother. Yeah. One, um, could you explain late Meher? Mm -hmm. And two, um, in our country, uh, and I, I, I... Which one? Which country? This is Pakistan. Yeah, okay. They tell us that after uh, three months, it's final. And that's it. Um, and what I hear you say, it, it's not final. You can remarry. Is there a time period in which you can remarry, or can you stay apart 10 years and then come back and remarry? See, unfortunately, our customs and habits superseded the Sharia. And the followers of the schools of thought have added to the school of thought that that leader of the school of thought is unaware of it. If we bring Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu anh, now, they'll make him kafir. They will tell him, you don't know your school. We know your school better. <laughs> true. True. Shafi'i, Imam Shafi'i, if you bring Imam Shafi'i now, the Egyptians and some of the Arabs will tell him, you, Imam Shafi'i, you don't know your school. We know it better than you. Let's educate you what you, you didn't know. Because you, you lived only between Egypt and Iraq and Syria. You didn't come to India. You didn't come to America. So you know nothing. Hey, Imam Abu Hanifa, did he live in America? No. You tell him you lived in Iraq and India much more than any other country, so you know that part of the world 1,200 years ago. So you are not here. We know better than you. But now, by the way, accidentally, ask anyone who says, I'm Hanafi, Hanafi. Can you tell me more about Imam Abu Hanifa? When he was born? Where? How long he lived? Then you tell me, can you tell me the names of the titles of his books that he has written? I can tell him he was born in Iran. <laughs> how long, how many years he lived? Do you know how many books he has written? The titles of the books? So how we are arguing on his, uh, his school of thought that even his books, titles, we don't know them. So we don't know anything about them, but we argue on their behalf. But I said that is culture that you have heard it from year after year, and we added, we deleted, and whatnot, it became much more than Sharia. If you take a course in Sharia, there are 18 items. One item say, customs and habits supersede Sharia. <gasps> and it's very difficult to change the custom uh, through the Sharia. Tell them this is Sharia, they tell you, no, this is custom. Ya this is haram. No, no, no. We have seen it 1,000 years. You are making it haram for us? No, it's halal. Or the reverse is true. So anytime you bring sharia into action, you find the one who object to you, customs and habits. But you have to absorb it. Otherwise, you fight. No, but the answer is not there. Mm -hmm. But is there any time limit, like in 10 years or 15 years? Or there is no time for joining together? Yeah, yes. You can join any time, okay, but no. you have to remarry, I mean. Yeah, but yeah. is it 10 years you can wait and join? That's no. what she's asking. No. There is no waiting period at all. The waiting period is only three months. No, but to remarry. If remarry. this woman has not married, and the man has not married, and they're raising children, and three, five, seven years later, they're more mature, and they realize that... If they, they want to join together, they have to remarry each other. In seven years? Yeah. But but it's it's not not I'm saying. They have the right to remarry any person after three months, okay? For the woman. For the woman, she has the right after three months to marry any man. Suppose she never married. And suppose he never married. And after 10 years, three years, one year, whatever number, now they said, let's remarry. Can you object them to come and join together? Because now they can mature, as she said. They recognize, now we have children, we better come together. Shaitan is out of their way. Rahman is with them. Let's join together. But they have to go marry like any other person. How many talaq? The critical question seems to be whether there has to be a, a, an interim period between the marriage and the marriage. Yeah. What your sister Ali is saying is whether there is to be an intervening. Now, in Pakistan and in the subcontinent, the general belief about Sharia is that when a husband pronounces a talaq, and even if he has not pronounced three times in the three months period, that is considered to be having pronounced three times, and then there is a final divorce at the end of the three months, and if that final divorce has been done, then there is not going to be any remarriage between the two unless there is an intervening marriage after wife with another person. 
and a divorce from him, and then there is going to be a second marriage between the two people. Now, this is the uh, Sharia, so far as it is practiced in Pakistan. Uh, I'm familiar with that. Now, uh, I understand what you're saying is that there has to be clear three divorces, about two divorces, and then the third time they have to have. That is the Sharia, not the customs in subcontinent. Mm -hmm. I know I have lived with it with the Indo-Pakistanis in America. They tell me all this. I said, show me where in the Sharia of Abu Hanifa. Well, I, I come from the Indian subcontinent. Huh? I come from the Indian subcontinent, and I did not hear anything different yeah. than what you have said. Right. But I have heard what he said, too. <laughs> I have heard what you said. I have heard what he said. Because then I bring them what Sharia is, and I verify it for them from all the schools of thought. There is nothing like that except, yes, that is Sharia of customs and habit. That is Sharia of the true Sharia. <laughs> so it depends which area or which Maulana <laughs> took over that group of people. Because most of us, let's be realistic, did you, take to, did you go to Nadwat al-Ulama in India and uh, study the Sharia? Did you go to the Yobendi school of thought and that? Uh, no. Did you go to Azhar Sharif and that? Uh, no. Even Egyptians. Doesn't mean they study it. And even if I want, if I want to Azhar and I study it, you know what in Azhar they tell you? Listen, even if you want to take a PhD or master or BA, they tell you which school of thought you want to college to. This is the college of Shafi'i. You study only the Shafi'i school of thought. And you get a degree only in Shafi'i school. This is a school of Hanafi. This is a school of uh, Hanbali, the school of Maliki. And they will teach you only one school. You end up narrow-minded, only one school. Why not to study all of them? No. Then you have to have a degree in master thesis to say comparative in one issue of it, not every issue. PhD, one issue, comparative study. What Imam Abu Hanifa, Maliki, Shafi'i has said in that particular issue, you get a degree. So we are narrow-minded even in those universities. And most of us. We are not graduate of any Sharia classes. Let's be realistic. We took Islam from mom and dad, and what Mawlana told mom and dad, and mom and dad told us that what Imam said, خلاص, as if he is God, and that's it. You go to the masjid, you see Mawlana, and he reads Quran even with hundreds of mistakes, but because melodic voice, you think, mashallah. And he jumped even from surah to surah without knowing that he is jumping. He made mistakes in it. And you are listening beautifully, happily. I have caught so many hafiz, hafiz, huh? not qari, jumping from surah to surah, from ayah to ayah, and people are so happy. We corrected some of them. They said, uh, he's not hafiz. I said, it's you. You call him hafiz. Uh, we had one young. Hafiz of a son of a Hafiz, grandson of another Hafiz, and Qari and Alim. He came to California and he started reading in Ramadan. He made so many mistakes. We had one brother from Mecca. I told him, you correct him. But that Mecca, we didn't memorize the Quran, but at least he carried the Quran in Taraweeh. Corrected him. Later on, that uh, Hafiz found out that the one who is correcting him, listen, huh? He's carrying the Quran. He found out, you are correcting through the Quran? He said, yeah. He said, your salat is batil. I said, he said, OK. You consider me batil in my salat, so what? He said, no. Because you corrected me, I, as an imam, my salat is batil. <laughs> then all of you have to repeat the whole taraweeh. <laughs> we went to Muzammil, Dr. Muzammil Siddiqui, because that brother from Subcon, we told him to come and tell him. He told him. He said, no, everything is OK. He said, no, my father said that. So all of you are wrong. So I'm telling you, even a son, 20 years old, has become blindfolded. Whatever his father might have told him, rightly or wrongly, he is one to enforce it on the whole ummah. That you have no right to carry Quran even behind me, even if I make mistakes. It's not your problem. It's not your business. You should not correct me because I am above mistake. Now you are a human being. And really, every imam, even Mecca, huh? in Mecca, all those big hafiz, I mean, the imam, he has about dozens behind him who are all hafiz because he might forget immediately. They correct him uh, softly, not loudly, and immediately he corrects himself. That's a human nature. No one is above mistake. Be humble enough, even a superhero memorizer of Quran. You know, sometimes in Fatiha you make mistake. Huh? Fatiha. 
make mistake just to teach you a lesson don't claim I am and I am and I am you forget you apologize uh, you make mistake in salat you apologize to Allah and then you make such that sujood sahaw and what not any other in the late mahal ah late mahal the first 